Hey guys, Kurt Chan, Technical Advantage at Autodesk, and today I want to talk about working with as-built joints as well as limits inside of Fusion 360, and the example I'm going to use is the Shapeoko 3 CAD model. If you have a Shapeoko 3 and you want to use this model, you can go ahead and download it within the description. Let's go ahead and dive right in. The first thing I want to do is set up all the as-built joints. And the reason why I'm using as-built joints here is because it's already in place of where everything needs to be in relationship to each other. The first thing too is when you download an imported model or with any imported model, always remember on the very top level, you always want to capture design history. I've already turned mine on and I've already went through and I created rigid groups of each section that I want to move continuously together. So what rigid groups does me, does is actually allows me to group certain components together and when I move one of those components that whole group moves together. So I've actually created three rigid groups and let me go ahead and just roll this roll the time bar back here and remember you can download this this file in the description below. I already have it in A360 so just go ahead and download the F3D file. But the first step is well how do I apply the as-built joists? Because as you can see, if I actually grab one of the pieces, if I grab this DeWalt router and move it off, you can see that this is one of the rigid groups that are together, but everything needs to work seamlessly in this ecosystem. So let's do Command-Z to go back to its initial position. So step number one, I'm actually gonna do three different types of joints. And if we look at the, uh, let's look at it from a from a, a X or a, Z, a Y axis location here is we zoom on out, let's take a look at it on this realm, is I want this to move left to right, right? So if we come back to our, our start location, first thing is under assembly, drop down to as built joint, and the components I want to move in relationship is I can just select this bar, this, this long extrusion, as well as I want to move along this extrusion as well, but what's the position? Of where is it going to move along? I can actually pick this this edge here, and now that bar is going to move along that edge. Now you just saw it only move just that extrusion. Well, once I right click and say OK, it's actually going to not only just move that extrusion, but everything else that I actually included with that rigid group. So that's really a key thing with the rigid groups is that once I create them, everything in relation to it will move with each other. So this controls you to go back to that location. So I've done one of them now. The next one I can do is let's say the, the X axis. I want this guy to move too, but see you can just move off just like this. Control Z just to go right back to the location. And I'm gonna take the same approach. I come up here under assembly, drop down to as built joint. And from here now, what's the component? This is my component I wanna move along this component. And what's kind of the position I want it to move along? Well, along that edge, and now I'm gonna have it move back and forth along that edge. Just do a right click, say okay. And now if I grab this component and move it, it's gonna move in relationship just like that as well. Really, really simple. Controls you to go back to that location. Let's now take a look at the Z axis. Same approach, come up to assembly, drop down to as built joint. And what components I want to select, I'm just going to deselect there because I had something selected. I'm going to now pick this piece and I want to move along this extrusion here. And what's the position? Just pick an edge and it's going to move along that location, move up and down. And there we have it. Right click, say OK. And now this is going to move along that location. Now all this will now move together. Well, now there's, there's an issue here. Now, if we look at it, as I move any one of these pieces, I have, I have all the as-built joints in place, but there's a problem. If I go past one of the extrusions, it's just going to pass right off the shape oco. So we can actually set limits to depict where I want things to move and how far I want them to move. So to show this, it's going to do Control z go back to its home location. And I'm going to start off now with the the Y location, and let's take a look at it from this realm here, is looking at it, well, I have it from the initial position, but how far do I want it to move off, right? Because if you look at the center of the DeWalt router, it needs to come all the way out to this back edge here, 
at the, uh, the, the front edge. So let me just do a quick inspect. So if I say from, from this point to, to maybe this edge, this is about, as you can see, about almost two inches. Now let's just clear this off and say, well, how far is it from here to the edge of the table? And that's about 16 inches. So I'm gonna minus around two inches from 16 inches because I want the center of that router almost to come to the edge of the scrap board uh, here. So what we're gonna do is, where do we input these values now? So under the joints folder, if we come down to that first slider, I get this little edit joints limit. And what I can do here now is say, well, let me turn on the minimum, which is zero. I like the location to now the maximum. I'm gonna go with around 14 inches and see it's only gonna move just that bar for visual perspective, because that's where we applied the initial as-built joint. And if I say, okay, now grab this guy, and now move it. Well, now this whole piece is gonna move all the way out to about four, right up to 14 inches, which is, which is exactly how I want it to go, almost aligned right up to the edge of the scrap board. So this, so this actually looks really nice now. I actually have it exactly how far I want to go out, and I can play with those numbers and tweak it how it needs to be. Just gonna do Control Z all the way back to initial position. Let's now take a look at the, the X position, how far it needs to go out. So let's do another quick measurement. Let's say we'll go from this edge, maybe all the way out to here, and that's roughly eight and a half inches, um, basically the same on, on both sides. And gonna close this out. I'm gonna go and now edit that next slider joint that I have, edit the joint limit. Come on here and turn on the minimum as well as the maximum. So I know the maximum is gonna be about negative 8.5, okay? And then let's go with the minimum of 8.5. So, so let's look at it from this avenue. And one thing I always like to start off with, is let's, let's start back with the, the minimum. Let's go with the maximum. And let's go with 8.5 up here. And then positive 8.5 for the maximum. And then now, as you can see, as we grab this guy and we move it, just like that, it's gonna go up to those specific limits. And we could always dial in and tweak it in, but always for demonstration purposes, it's nice just to show the movement of exactly what's going on. And then lastly, let's talk about the Z. Now, the, the nice thing about the Z side is that on the shape of code, it's about a four and a quarter inch Z travel. That's how much you get. And the Z height, uh, the build volume is 16 by 16 by roughly three inches for your stock. So same approach here under the slider, edit the joint limit, turn on a minimum and a maximum. And you can see right up here, the very top, I'm not at the very top level. So I'm gonna go with roughly about an inch, go up, uh, an, an inch going upward, let's go up. And then for a maximum going down, let's go with negative three going down that way. And you know, it could be give or take a little bit less, but let's, let's go with these values here. And as we move it, see how low that the, the end point is? So we, we know that's a little too far. But if I now move up on this, on this realm, so now in regards to editing the limit under that, that last slider, we're just gonna edit the limit. And we can basically say once again that we're about an inch off the top and we wanna go about three inches down for maximum height of about four inches for the Z travel. So I'm gonna turn on the minimum, turn on the maximum, and let's go with a a minimum of about negative one and a maximum of, of uh, eh, four is a little too much. Let's go with three and say okay. And let's take a look at how this is gonna look. So we can go down eh, about one, up three. It's got my numbers reversed. So let's control Z, come back in and edit that, that joint. And let's go with three and one here and say okay. So now we can go up about one and come down about three, just like that. Now even the three is a, is, is a little too far. So one thing we can do now is, is play around with these limits. Let's change that to, you know, two if we choose. And then now if we move this up and down, there we go. So give us enough room for the length of the tool, goes up 
and this is how we can play around with these limits specifically. So looking at it, let's go back to our, our start position. You can see the value of as-built joints. You can see how easy it is to apply limits and work it inside of Fusion 360. If you like the video, click the thumbs up. If you want to download this file, click in the description. You can download the file here from A360. I have it all ready to go for you guys, already dialed in. Always keep in mind is that you want to turn on the design history here to capture all the history when you're working with imported files. And hopefully this helped you guys out. Thanks again.